Number six is a no line reference question. So if we're using the no reading strategy, we need some clues to help us find where to look. Now we could use the chronology rule because number seven is a line reference question and number five is also a line reference question. So we can just read in between that. But here's a good example of just like the standard way is gonna help you too. Just skim for the key idea. They're very clear about what they want. This interaction between Miss Spive Miss Spivey and Ralford and that happens in around line 30 to 38. And what are they talking about? Okay, so I would go from the question to the line reference and see what I've got before I look at those choices. So it says, after her travels with Dr. Miller, Miss Spivey continued her education by attending Barnard College in New York City. She told us all that at school the first day. When my little brother Ralford asked what, she, what did she study at Barnyard College, Miss Spivey explained that Barnard, which she wrote on the blackboard, was the sister school of Columbia University, of which she expected we all had heard. Okay, so they're talking about college. They're talking about Barnard, the college that Miss Spivey went to, and there's confusion about it. That's, that's my dumb summary. That's about all I care about at this point. I get it. I get what's happening. So let's go to the choices. So choice A, suggest that Miss Spivey has an exaggerated view of what information should be considered common knowledge. I don't like this choice because of the word exaggerated. That's a strong word. And so right off the bat, that scares me. Maybe it's right. I, I don't understand the lines enough to know at this point, but that one word is enough to make me nervous. So I might keep it because I don't understand it, but I'm nervous about it. Let's look at B. Establish a friendly dynamic between the charming school children and their indulgent and doting new instructor. Well, there's a lot of strong words in that choice, right? We need proof that it's friendly. We need proof that the children are charming. We need proof that the teacher is indulgent and, indulgent and doting. Lots of adjectives, lots of strong words. Now, I definitely get the vibe that it seems pretty friendly. I mean, like, she's not yelling at the kids. Um, are they charming? Well, the kid is calling it barnyard college, so that feels fine, so check, check. Is she indulgent and doting? Honestly, I don't, I don't know. I don't really get that vibe at this point. So I would, again, kind of just be like, all right, let's, let's keep moving. Let's see if I can eliminate C and D and then go from there because it's okay to not understand everything right away. That's fine. So C, introduce Ralford as a precocious young student and Miss Spivey as a dismissive and disinterested teacher. So that's really strong too. Dismissive and disinterested, those are really negative words, and I did not get a super negative vibe here. I got like more of a mixed vibe, like it's like a cute story, but also the kid didn't know something, so it's kind of mixed, but it's certainly not this negative. I don't like this choice. It's strong and provably wrong in my mind. D, demonstrate that the children want to amuse Miss Spivey with their questions. Well. Here, the, the strong word is want. I really don't know what they want. Ralford is asking about the college, the college name. Like, I don't, I don't know what they want to do from that question. I just know that that's what he's asking. So we have to be very careful with words that, in a choice, make it seem like we understand the intentions of the characters. We can sometimes make assumptions about them, but we really want to have evidence to understand why different characters are doing certain things. Right here, I have no evidence. He's just asking a question. I don't want to put my own beliefs and feelings onto Ralford. He's his own man. So that's also wrong. And I think that A and B are very similar. And so now we really need to dive into those strong words. If she's indulgent and doting, that's supposed to be a good thing, a positive word. In this case, indulgent means you kind of like let the kids get away with stuff. And doting means you're really caring about them. So if you know the vocab, that can really help here. Whereas choice A is this word exaggerated. And she's, we're talking about what information should be considered common knowledge. And if we go back to the lines, there is a key phrase here. What she expected. So we don't know what the, the kids are thinking, but we actually do know what Miss Spivey is thinking. She's kind of like a little just mad at Ralford, playfully so, but a little mad at him for not knowing what Barnard College is and Columbia University. Like, 
how, how could you not know what these are is kind of her point of view. And the kid's like seven or something. So obviously he doesn't know what this is, but the teacher expects that he should know it. And so that's why A is the answer here. We have some strong words, but we can kind of prove them if we narrow our focus to them. She assumes like a seven-year-old kid is going to know the name of a college, you know, a thousand miles away. That's ridiculous. He, of course he doesn't know that. And so it's an exaggerated view. She's wrong to have assumed that he should know that. Whereas B, indulgent and doting are a little too positive for this kind of like mixed positive negative vibe that I'm getting from here. But this is a very difficult question. I think I got this wrong the first time I did it, and it's because these, these lines are very difficult to understand. But notice, we don't try to really understand them until we have things from the choices that we can start to like look for in the lines. A lot of times the lines start to make sense as you give yourself a goal, some sort of task to look through the lines and try to find certain ideas. So it's okay not to understand things. That is fine. It's going to happen on your SAT. Just get comfortable with it and find ways of then increasing your understanding as you go through a question. I think you'll surprise yourself how much more comes to you as you do a question.